the first thing I want to do is kind of sketch in any missing information that I need to put in there. And some examples of some missing information would be the trees, the border. In this case, I, there's a little bit of detail on that back door that I didn't show. You know, it might be a good time to put in any window detail, but we're just going to do this kind of quickly because we want to set up what the final drawing is going to look like. Well, I'm going to start with some borders. And I'm going to be pretty rough about this. I want my sky to be a little higher than I showed in the SketchUp. For the front, I tend to show a little less than, I don't show a ton of foreground, but I do want to catch most of these trees. I want to make the bottom a little bigger than the sky. Okay, and here, because we've got an aerial view, I've got to figure out my horizon stripe, which I'm going to do the same thing that I did on my, on my elevate. A lot of this is going to be similar to elevations. How does that look? There we go. Okay, good. A lot of this is going to be similar to elevations. Now, in theory, the horizon stripe would be like right here on the horizon. When I have bird's eye views, I bring it down a little bit. my horizon stripe and I might even and I'm going to bring my foreground in a little bit from the horizon stripe. This will make more sense when I darken all this stuff up. Patch there see if it holds. Okay now the next thing I don't have is the trees. Now I've drawn tree lines on the perspective what I did is I went down, I don't know how well this shows up, but you guys all were able to bring your site plan into your perspective, which is good. All right, I just then go from the center of the tree, I draw a line straight up, and when I'm in SketchUp, I drew some specific heights. These I said were eight feet tall. I forgot what I said for these bigger trees. They might have been 20 or 30 feet tall. I, I put some lines in to represent tree heights. You don't have to do that. You can eyeball it. Um, I find it helpful when you're tracing. So I know at the top of these trees, looks to be about right here. So I've got four trees in there. And I'm just drawing those like a blob. That's all I need for now. All right, I know I've got another one about the same height here. So let's put that in there. I know I've got some little ones. Where's that a fence? That's the fence right here. That's a rock wall, which I haven't shown any height to, but I'll just sketch something in roughly there. I've got a pretty big tree here. Now, another thing you'll notice, remember I said two-point perspective, that this is a two-point perspective. Well, I actually kind of lied. This is actually a three or four, this is actually a one, two, three, four. This might be a five-point perspective. I've got a right and a left vanishing point here. 
In addition, these lines actually slope down to a vanishing point that's way back here. But it's pretty subtle. It gets less subtle. If you'll notice, the center of the building, that wall is pretty much straight up and down. As I start to move away from my eye, notice how much that one starts to slope this way. And this one starts to slope that way. And by the time we get to some of these trees way off, they slope a fair amount. We're going to ignore that, and we're just going to make them all straight, which is fine. I know that this line for this tall tree ends here. I'm just going to go ahead and straighten that out. It's close enough. All right. The same is going to go for all these wall lines. I'm going to kind of look in the middle and say, okay, well, that's pretty much where it is. That's pretty much where it is. It, it, again, it's accurate enough for the work that we're doing. It's a sketch, so that's all right. I've got a few more trees. I've got some in the back. I've got another big one here. Oh, I think I had another one here. I don't call out any over here, but there are some over here. So let's do maybe a good one here. And maybe a good one here. All right, so I've gotten most of the trees in. It's kind of tough to see. I'm going to go ahead and try and draw in. I'm just hand sketching some of the road lines that might be a little tough to read through the layers of trace. OK, there's the driveway. I've got a wall. Now, I can remember what the wall does. I actually have a garage door there. We're not going to put that there. Um, I don't indicate any trees. My sight plan. Oh yeah, I got a little fella over there. It's probably on the site plan, I just can't quite see it. But I got a little guy kind of in here. There's actually a little fence. Comes off there. Um, and I think that's enough for landscaping. On the front of the building, I remember that this had a little cross buck on it. So I'm just going to sketch that in. You can look at your elevation and see it. Uh, everything else looks to be OK. Um, I might even take a little artistic liberty. And because I don't show the area away here, I'm going to just put a tree in here. Now I've got my sky, my background stripe, my trees, and my foreground. My foreground is here. Let me erase some lines. Couple things to notice. Uh, I want to have, I'm going to assume. If there's going to be another tree here, I'll move my foreground on this side. For the same reasons on your elevation, I like trees hanging out. I want the same thing to happen in perspective. I've got one here. We're going to call it with that. I'm not going to put one there. All right. Now I've done the rough work that wasn't on my original drawing. If you only drew squares for the window, now would be the time to sketch in those mullions. But I already put them in, and many of you did too. That's it. That's my rough layout. I take that, and now we're going to go to town for real.
put a fresh piece of trace over it. And now we're going to start working in ink. Seems like it might have some life left in it. All right, first thing I'm going to do, I, I'm going to do my trees kind of for real. And I want to do the trees that are up front first. And the reason I'm going to do the trees. couple tricks about doing the trees, especially if they're in a line like this. Don't do it one, two, three, four, five, because some of them are going to be in front and some of them are going to be a little behind. Alternate a little. leaves in here and there. Now go back and do some infill for the ones that are because when I did the sketch I just did blobs. The reason we're going to do this is because what we don't want to do is draw our house lines through our trees. So I like to get the trees in the foreground in particular. Drawn first. I'm going to do some of the background trees. And I use a similar tree, although I'm struggling this evening, but they're kind of okay. Now I gotta be careful because I got a couple little guys here. I wanna make sure that I get the ones that are in front drawn in front. Make sure you stop the trees. before they go through the house. Mm, that'll do it. I'll probably put in a few more dewberries in a few minutes. I've just blocked out my trees. Now I'm going to start doing elements of the house, which is where I'm going to bring out my straight edge. And I hate to do this. Can you still see that up there? Uh, let me try getting rid of one of them. The problem is I can't see to draw. See if that helps.
Yeah, that'll work. Okay, I'm going to start with the major shape of the building first. Remember to overlap your lines. Put a little character in. I'm using my thin Sharpie for now. It's just tracing at this point, but it's important that you get the overlaps in. I stick, please. Just doing all the major elements. On my gables, I like to put that front trim piece in now. couple things that are important at those corners, get that straight line in there. It's little, but it makes a difference. Now I was going to show the propane tanks, but by the time I got the trees in, you really couldn't see them, so that's fine. Uh, we'll do some of the windows in front. I tend to do all my diagonal lines first. Not diagonal, but my the horizontal lines that I'm representing first, and then I'm going to come back in and put in verticals. Good. I got something going on around here. I got to watch out for my tree. And you'll notice that what happens is a lot. Now, here I'm going to do the edge of this roof, and it's pretty tiny, but I need to go back to this vanishing point with it. So if I put my pencil here and I, I pen and I line it up even with the bottom of those windows. I know I'm going back to the vanishing point. Okay, a little bit of the top there. Don't even see the door. Most of these windows have been completely wiped out. I got a little bit here and there. But that's why we do the trees first, so that we don't have to draw a bunch of stuff we don't need.
Every now and then for these short lines, I like to make sure I'm going back to the vanishing point. I saw one there. And there's a little bit of a remnant of a window here. That's about all we can see of it. Okay, I've done most of the sloping lines that are going back. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to put in my vertical lines. And again, I'm going to have to cheat a little bit. One thing I want you to notice, when we start getting to the edges, try and accentuate any little bumps and trim. For example, so here's a little jog right there. Make, don't just do a straight line if there's a little change in trim. Put a little bump in there. It'll, it'll, make, it'll give your drawing a lot more character. I can pick up any lines, any diag any sloping lines that I've missed now. Now you'll find when you start doing these windows way off in the distance, especially on a sloping wall, it's tough to get that trim in, but just use your best judgment. And sometimes you don't even do all of the dividers. Just hint at them. That's close enough.
missed any lines on the building. Now's the time to put them in. All right, so now I've got the basic lines for the house all done. Now I'm going to start doing my freehand sight lines, but I do have some straight lines on the site. Um, I'm just going to guess at the wall for now. I've got a little bit of a wall here. In, in reality, it's a, it's a higher wall, but what I'm going to do I'm just going to kind of here I don't have a wall, but I'm going to do my curve. Yeah, I've got a little bit of a wall. I've got some straight lines in there. I can barely see them, mind you. There are some steps here. I'm just going to kind of wing it for the steps. Close enough. All right, now I've got those things blocked out. I'm going to start taking a look at my borders. That I sketched out from earlier. I'm even adjusting them a little. I'm trying not to rip my drawing off the board. I'm going to go ahead and put in a background stripe right now.
Okay, I put a stripe in. Again, I've held the stripe down from the real horizon because if you do it with the real horizon, there's a lot of background to fill up and this kind of cuts down on that. Um, all right, I'm gonna put some trunks in on my trees. Any idea what we should be thinking of next? If you were doing an elevation, what would you do next? What would you add to this? Texture. Hmm? Texture. One more time. Texture. Extra? Texture. Yes, I'm sorry. Part, bear with me. Um, texture, yes, but what would you do before that? Shadows. Yes, that's where I was going to go. Shadows and profile. And then I'm going to move on to texture. And I want a nice, because of the size of this drawing, it's pretty small. If your Sharpie's got, if your fat Sharpie has a good point on it, that will help you. Fair. Dreadful. Nice. Okay. Well, I might have stole that from one of you folks. That's a real good one. Um, Yeah, that's all right. All right, shadows at the windows, same thing. We're going to cast the shadows down and to the right, which means we're going to draw them up and to the left. So I'm going to start by doing the tops of my windows. And I think you'll see a big difference just by adding the shadows in here. Sorry, just trying not to smear my Sharpie if I can help it. First thing I'm doing is all my openings. And now I'm going to do it on the left. Well, we're going to let it dry. I don't know if waving the, sh the triangle over it actually helps it dry, but it makes me feel like I'm doing something about the situation. All right, you can already start to see a difference just from putting those shadows in, how much it makes the windows pop. Next, I'm going to take a look at any roof things that are projecting over, and I want to shadow those. And I'm also going to notice that I missed some lines. You'll be going through this all the time. I notice that I've missed a line here for that corner of the building. I've missed a couple window lines here. And maybe a couple here. Okay, so I'm going to do, I'm going to start with any overhangs. Make sure you stop the shadow at the edge of the building. Sometimes I make one side a little fatter than the other one to show that 
The sun is coming from that side. Back here, it's so small, I'm probably not going to do that. Okay, I've got the shadows on the mid. Oh, you will constantly be finding new shadows. Okay, I've got the shadows on the main element. When I profile, I'm just going to do the upper perimeter of the building, not the bottom. With the elevations, you have that big stripe. We don't have that in the perspectives. I'll show you what we're going to do to work around that. So I'm just doing the perimeter. Okay, so I've got the perimeter of everything. That's going to be it for shadows and profile. Now we're going to start working on some texture. And I might add some trim that I think might be missing or that's needed. I notice there's a piece missing here. I want to highlight those corners. Typically there's going to be a little trim at the base. So let's go ahead and put a little of that in there. A little corner trim. That looks pretty good. All right, now I'm going to start. I'm going to do some of the texture on the building. This is all clapboard. I don't have any bricks in this one. We got to do the roof. We got to do the building. Clapboards are a problem in that. Whereas on the elevation, you could just go straight across. Here, you can't. You have to go back to the vanishing point. In the case of this view, I'm going to start here. I'm looking. Notice I've kind of split the windows. I'm not going to put a ton of this stuff in there. Because it's very easy. to get mixed up and not go back to the vanishing point. So just hint. Doesn't take much. See, I'm a little off there. But that's close enough. When in doubt, stop. See here, I want to put a line there. Well, I can look and see if it lines up with these lines, which are going back to the vanishing point. Let's put a little here. Well, I can line it up with that roof right there.
Well, now I'm just looking for places that look like they're crying for a little texture. And I'll just put a line or two in there. I'm pretty good there. Roof, I'm going to do the same thing that I did on the elevations. I, I got to split it in half. So roughly there's half. I got to make sure that it's going back to the vanishing point, which in this case is right about there. Make sure where it is. I'm sorry. It's actually right about here. a little off. I don't care. Hopefully. I got a little bit going on here. I'm going to go ahead and just double line this to make it stand out a little bit. Which really didn't work, but that's okay. Um, I'm just going to punch that a little bit. All right, so I've got texture on the building. For the ground, I'm going to wind up putting my cheap grass in in a minute. But the first thing I, I'm going to do is I'm going to try and, for starters, finish the sidewalk. Right. I'm going to, at the bottom of the trees, I don't want them just sitting like lollipops in the middle of nowhere. So I tend to... Use my little stroke. Put a little bit of, I don't know what you want to call this, leaves. Just something at the bottom of the trees. And then don't hesitate to throw a few more in. But all the, and, and you know, if it's a little, if you find yourself in a spot that just looks like it's crying for a little more vegetation, go ahead and add it in. This is one of the downsides of doing aerial view perspectives is you wind up with a fair amount of foreground and you really can't just leave it open. You've got to put something in there. Start with the base of the trees. We'll add more to it. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and double line, just like we did on the plan, where my hard surfaces meet my soft. Make it a point to do that on the bottom of the building because that's going to work instead of our profile line. A lot of the bottom of the building is covered there. Here it's against pavement, so I don't do it. Um, just for fun, we will put in the Jamel line, which it will forevermore be referred to as. Excuse me. Um, I would put a little texture on the pavement, not much, just a little. I'm going to put a little character on this wall. Just to kind of hint that it might be some kind of stone. Kind of aiming for the end so I don't have to do the whole thing. And I think, let's slide a piece of paper under it to see if there's any glaring spaces that are really crying for help. Last thing I'm going to do, grass. Got a fair amount of white space there, not so much there. I tend to do my initial grass lines, I use the same cheap grass. And I'm just going to go, I, I, I'm not exactly following the vanishing point lines, but I'm kind of close. There's not a whole lot of it here, but there's some. And again, I'm kind of approximately going back to the vanishing points. And what it does is it kind of fills in, much like it did on your plans. It fills in some of the white space. And if I have a tremendous amount of it, like in here, don't hesitate to throw a few leaves in. Anybody see anything big they'd like me to put? Oh, sorry. I'd call that ready to roll for a black and white. And it's a little more fun to show a client than this. I'm going to stop the recording. Hopefully I was recording. If not, I'll be doing